New Year's Eve, and um, let's see, what have I done? <laughs> I just took a long, hot bubble bath, I did, and I masked my face with a multivitamin mask I had gotten, and I just relaxed, that's all I did, and John and I are going to pile up, we're just going to watch some TV tonight, and I'm not going to lie to y'all, I don't mind it being this relaxing and, and uneventful to y'all, I, I really don't, so... We can just reflect on other years. Um, a couple of winters back, I was in Ireland with our youngest son, John Tyler. We had gone with sort of like a senior trip for him with some of the seniors he graduated and some other children, kids, not children, young adults, and teachers and such. And with, I got this sweatshirt in Ireland, so I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just put it on and stay warm, and John's going to build a fire, and we're going to watch some movies and... Probably be asleep by the time the new year comes in, right? Um, something I'm doing though, my family's coming tomorrow for New Year's supper. This will sort of be like our Sunday supper, but on New Year's. And first thing I need to do, because black eyed peas, and this is something I want to talk to y'all about, is some traditional things that we do here. And I know lots of you are in the United States as well, and traditionally you have the same thing, or in the South. And so I want to know what all of y'all do. What do y'all do on New Year's or what is your New Year's meal? Um, I'm going to start with this bag that I bought of black eyed peas right here. And this is a two pound bag. But whatever's left over, I'm going to make this cool little soup with black eyed peas for us next week. And so y'all enjoy that too. So I'm hoping some is left over to be honest with you. But if not, oh well. Anyway, I wash them. I'm going to put that over to the side. I put them in a colander and I wash them real good um, just to check and see if any's bad in there. They all look really good. Um, I say that and I found one little, one little guy here. Let me get him out. He's just discolored. And they don't have rocks in, in them anymore like, like how we were raised to look for little pebbles and rocks. I think it's their processing and everything. But anyway, I still wash mine. I still do, guys, so we're going to put that in here, and these are dried, so they need to soak in water all night long, overnight, um, unless you want to cook them forever tomorrow and keep adding water, but I just like to soak them overnight, and then I can get them ready real quick, so that's all I do, and I just cover them in water, and this is just some tap water, I just put it here so I wouldn't have to leave y'all, so I'm just doing a little prep work for movie time. There we go. Y'all see I've got them covered. And I put a bit more water over there so it'll be able to absorb really nicely. And then another thing I'm going to do tomorrow, this cabbage. This is another thing we do traditionally um, is we cook cabbage and sometimes we boil it. I fry mine in a skillet. And I know y'all know what I mean. With some bacon grease. Y'all know y'all knew that already too, right? And then I'm going to do creamed potatoes, red potatoes. These aren't necessarily traditional, but they're good, right? So I'm going to do creamed red potatoes. And something else I'm going to do, we love to eat, um, is venison steaks. And you see my packages, they're frozen. And in, in Louisiana, we have white-tailed deer. So that's what these are, some white-tailed deer steaks. And John harvested them. I don't hunt, but if you're going to harvest something, then I'm going to cook it up. We're going to eat it. We're not going to waste it, that's for sure. And so I got these out to thaw earlier today, and they need to soak. That's the only thing about wild game is you need to soak them, and I soak mine in salt water. And I want to tell you, it does not make your meat salty, okay? Don't think that. But do you see how dark red that is? That's a lot of blood in this deer. And so, all I'm doing is just, all it does is draw out some, a lot of that blood, most or all of the blood, honestly, the salt water does. And that way it doesn't taste so wild and it just leaves a nice sweet meat flavor. And if once you fall in love with deer steak or venison steak, you'll like it better than you do beef. And I know we're growing beef cows, so shh, 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 shh. But anyway, it's just a nice little treat. Okay, guys, y'all see. Let me rinse my hands and grab us some more water, okay? Did you close up the chickens for me, baby? I did, Thank you, darling. Alright, guys, sorry I left y'all. I had to get us some more water. 
Okay, y'all see what I'm doing. I just put them in here and I'll put these back in the refrigerator. Okay, my beans or my peas, I'll just leave out on the counter soaking overnight. But this, of course, I'll put back in the refrigerator. And I just take salt, iodized salt, okay? And I generously put it in here. Y'all see what I'm doing? Generous. Because like I say, this does not make your meat salty, okay? I promise. I'll drain this off. Um, once it soaks overnight in the refrigerator and then it will continue to thaw in the refrigerator. And it will be ready for us to uh, marinate them and bread them and get them fried up tomorrow for some fried deer steaks. They'll be good, good. And I'll do the green potatoes. Of course, I'll make gravy and have <laughs> Well, it's time to start cooking New Year's. Yes, it is. New Year's dinner. Um, the grandkids are already here. They spent the night with us and they're piled up in the living room watching videos and playing games. And so I'm in here in the kitchen with y'all. Addie will be in and out though. You gonna come say hi, Addie, babe? <laughs> She's been on my treadmill. <laughs> I wish you could work out for me. I wish you would work like that. Won't you? Me too, because you jump on that a lot more than me, baby. <laughs> Um, first thing I'm going to do, guys, since we've got so much cooking to do, I'm going to cheat today and I'm going to use um, Parker House style rolls, cheese rolls, and they're frozen little rolls, okay? And um, yeah, you can have some of those, baby. You sure can. And so, i got to get these rising for us. So I just took them out of the freezer. And they're already frozen little yeast rolls, and they're really good if you need to do lots and lots and lots of other cooking. I sprayed my pan. Did y'all see that with the nonstick cooking spray? I did do that. And I arranged these on here all pretty. Let's see here. I guess I've got so much other cooking to do that I am going to do a little cheater on this. Yes, I am. But my family will not care. They love these too. One time we'll make some homemade yeast rolls. We will do that. We sure will. Yes, we will. It is freezing here today in Louisiana. I mean freezing temperatures outside. Y'all been, a lot of y'all been messaging me living up higher than us. But y'all been in freezing temps. Well, we have, we have gotten here too. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Okay, guys, I sprayed them on top again, and I'm going to let them rise. I actually stick them in my oven with just the light on. My oven has a bread proofing in it that barely warms and makes them rise, but I'm not sure how. I don't want them to rise too soon, because if you let them rise too soon, and then you don't bake them, they'll start to actually fall again. So if I need to turn on my bread proofing, but usually that little light in your oven is perfectly fine for... Um, making it just warm enough to make these rolls fall and start to rise. So I'm going to do that. And let's see, what are we going to cook next? We'll get our peas going. I'll be right back. <laughs> look, at, look at what those two pounds of peas swelled up to look like. <laughs> I'm not sure they'll all fit in here, y'all. What do y'all think? I don't know. I think I might put some of them. Just some of them. That's a lot of peas, isn't it? My big old pot is down in the canning kitchen. I don't really have time to get down in there and get it, but I might have to, huh? I want to cook them all so we can make that soup, too, so I'll be back, because look at that. That's not going to give us any cooking room, is it? I don't know. I might can make... We'll make this work. No, no, we won't. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. The next time y'all see it, they'll be in the bigger pot. I'm going to put some salt. And this is a lot of peas, so I'm going to start with at least two teaspoons of salt. Two generous teaspoons of salt. This is a lot of peas, isn't it? Black-eyed peas. I wanted to tell you a story I read years ago about black-eyed peas. Um, why we consider them to be good luck and bring us good luck for the next year here in the South. And I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a cute story. Back during the Civil War, when we were fighting the North against the South, and we were killing each other. Yeah, I know. Smart, yeah. But back during that time, um, they said that when the Yankee soldiers were down here, or the Northern soldiers, um, they would go in, and I'm sure the soldiers from the South were doing the same thing up North, but they would go in the gardens of the local people, 
and take everything from their gardens to eat because they were soldiers fighting and they needed the food. But the one thing they left behind for the um, local people or the people that were growing the gardens was the black eyed peas. I don't know if it's not a northern thing or they just didn't, I don't know if they didn't want to fool with them or didn't know what to do with them. So in the south back then, they decided that the peas is what brought them through, keep them from starving to death because that's the one thing the soldiers left behind. So um, that's why we consider it, or that's one of the stories why we consider it good luck for the year or prosperity or we eat them every year. It's kind of in memory of those horrible times that had fallen on our land, I guess, you know, and what brought us through was some black eyed peas. And this is the only time John and I or anybody in the family eats the peas every year. <laughs> Um, they kind of remind me of Purple Hole, but Purple Hole are so much better to, to me than these. But anyway, y'all saw me put the salt, and to give them some more flavor, I'm going to put one can of chicken broth. And this has got the sodium in it, so that'll add a little more salt as well, but one can won't make it too salty. Just to add a little flavor. And y'all know I'm going to put some bacon grease. Yep, y'all knew that, though. Not surprising. At all. No, it isn't. There we go. I'll put me a good tablespoon. Why not? You can put a smoked ham hock in here. You can put some smoked sausage in here. Whatever you want to do. But I'm cooking those venison steaks, so y'all might as well just stick with this. And I'm going to put water. Fill it up the rest of the way. And like I say, this may not work. I might have to um, go get my big pot out of my canned kitchen anyway, but y'all see what I'm going to do. And even though we soak these overnight, they're still going to go an hour and a half-ish, okay? So that's why I'm going to get them low and slow. And as they um, cook out the water, I'll continue to add more water to them, keep them uh, from going dry. But anyway, this is this, and we're going to make cornbread and do the deer steaks. I'll get the deer steaks marinating. I'll drain them off that salt water next. <laughs> I do want to apologize because I'm going to have to put these videos, this is a YouTube video, and um, I'm going to have to put this on Facebook too because when my grandbaby spent the night, my other little camera that I do for Facebook, it kind of got unplugged from charge. Hmm. <laughs> but hey, that's a misdemeanor, right? Exactly. So anyway, I drained those deer steaks that y'all saw me put in salt water to just draw out some of the blood. I drained them in this colander. And then I'm going to put them back in the bowl, just like that. <coughs> there we are. And the only things that I marinate with is buttermilk. Buttermilk is fantastic. Yes, it is. So good. It gives flavor and tenderizes. It's just fantastic. That's about all that buttermilk. <laughs> and then I use Louisiana hot sauce. And it doesn't make this deer meat hot at all, but it gives it nice, nice flavor, okay? And then I will make a flour that I'll drain these again in that colander after they marinate for a while. I'm going to put these back in the refrigerator. Y'all see, I'm just shaking, shake, shake, shaking that hot sauce like that. I don't know how much to tell you that was. I really don't. And I'll kind of... Move them around a bit, let everything get on to everything, and I'll put the lid back on. I'll put these back in the refrigerator and let this sit for 30 minutes. You can let it sit a couple of hours, but just about 30 minutes, and you'll be ready to fry them. Hey, y'all! <laughs> um, next, we are going to do crop top mac and cheese, and I am so excited to do this with y'all. I've been wanting to do it for some time, so I said this would be a great time. This is a great thing to do when I do Sunday suppers. You can put it in the crock pot and you basically forget about it. So I love it. Yes, I do. It seems like every time I put a little bit different stuff in it. First thing I'm going to do is spray my crock pot. And I know I can use baggies, but I'm going to wash that crock anyway. So I'll just do it that way. But if I spray it with nonstick cooking spray, it does pretty good. All right. First, I'm going to put all my ingredients in there before I put my macaroni and you don't have to cook this one. I know a lot of them say pre-boil your macaroni but you're kind of defeating the purpose, right? I know, you have to dump it and leave it. So this is a one pound box or 454 gram box of elbow macaroni. 
I'm going to put one cup of whole milk. Ours is 2% though. Y'all know that. I tell y'all that all the time, don't I? And then I've got one can, 12 ounce can of um, evaporated milk. This is carnation. Some of them are called pet milk, but it's just evaporated milk. And I love that flavor. It gives it a real rich flavor. You could just put just the milk if you want to. You could put half and half. You could put heavy cream. So you can see how you can kind of play with that. No problem. I've got a can of cheddar cheese soup. If you don't have that, it won't be the end of the world if you don't use that. But it's really good in here. It just adds a little something. A little something and some flavor. And then I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. That's optional if you want to. And y'all know I want to. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of dry ground mustard. A half a teaspoon there. And that was a generous half a teaspoon. And y'all, we're going to put some grated nutmeg. I'm going to get me a whole one out of here. And I'm going to grate a good bit of it, about half of it. What is that? Maybe another half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Every time I almost drop them off in my dish. <laughs> my grand boys are over here watching me. Y'all want to come over here and say hi to everybody? Hey! Who are you? Oh, I did drop it in there. And what is your name? Luke. Luke. And what is your name, sir? Bryson. Bryson. Luke and Bryson. They spent the night with Addie last night. Okay, guys, I'm going to stir this up. Oh, and I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt. Don't want to forget that because you know that macaroni's got no salt yet. And I am going to put some fresh ground pepper. Two. I'm going to do that too. And I'm going to whisk this pretty good just to get that cheddar cheese soup um, whisked in well like that. Splash it around and who you getting on y'all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There we go. That paprika turned it kind of a pretty little color. It did, it did. All right, next, we will put, I love Velveeta, and this is eight ounces of Velveeta. And I know a lot of you say that's not really cheese, but it's real creamy in macaroni and cheese. So you don't want to, you don't have to. That's, that's looking good so far, isn't it, boys? And then I've got eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese, and I'm going to put half now. And then I'm going to save half of it to sprinkle on top after we let this cook on low, a few hours um, on low. And you'll stir it occasionally. Just occasionally you'll give a little stir to make sure because some of that macaroni on the side might try to get a little too done. So I'll go back after about an hour or so and give it a little stir. And now we're going to put this one pound box of elbow macaroni. Uncooked. That's what's so good about it, right? I know. You sure can. Y'all go get that pizza. They're hungry now. They want some pizza. Y'all get at it. And I'm looking at this. And I can tell it needs some more milk in it. So let's put one more cup of milk. And I've got it right here. I sure do, baby. Throw that away for me. Thank you. I just looking at it, normally I put about half that macaroni, but we got the whole, all the kids and grandkids coming over, so I put the whole box, but sometimes you can just put half of that, about eight ounces of macaroni. If it's just you, or just you and yours, if it's just John and me. Okay, guys. Oh, the most important, most important ingredient. I almost left that. I'm going to dot some butter around it. And this is unsalted butter, but you can use salted butter. It won't hurt a thing in this macaroni, will it? You might put your little less salt in the beginning, but it'll be just fine. I know a lot of you just get salted butter, but I like to unsalt it. That way I know if I'm baking or something how much salt is actually going in it. But this macaroni it doesn't matter, does it? No, it doesn't. And the grandbabies will lap this up, won't y'all? 
This is going to be a lot of macaroni and cheese, y'all. <laughs> it looks good already, Lou. Well, thank you, baby. Okay, guys, I'm going to put this on low and get started on the rest of the meal. And like I say, in an hour or so, I'll come and I'll stir it, make sure nothing's sticking to the side too much. And um, if it needs a little more milk at that time, I might put a little more milk, okay? So, um, but it doesn't need to do, but maybe two, two and a half hours. You'll be able to tell when your macaroni's done. And then I'll come back the last 30 minutes and I'll put the rest of that cheddar and let it just melt all on the top. And that's... Hey, y'all, I almost forgot. This is something else we do. <laughs> Oh, and it's crazy and silly. What I do with my penny, Lou? Did you see what I did with my penny? Yeah. Into this pot, we put, and I washed him really good, okay? We put a little copper penny, and that's supposed to be good luck. I know that's silly, but that's what, um, that's what all the people did when I was a little kid. So we're going to drop that in our pot of peas. <laughs> Maybe that's a little help. Just a little bit of help. Y'all reckon? I've got my mashed potatoes going here, or my green potatoes, and I'm about to get started on my deer steak. And then we got to make cornbread. One of y'all told me about the glass measuring bowl you could order for the uh, sand mixer, and I appreciate it. Y'all see, I did get me one. Okay, guys. I have got y'all over here to the stove. Here is our deer steaks that we have marinating. My marinated about an hour and I took them out of the refrigerator and I'm draining them in this colander to get most of that buttermilk off. And then I fixed me a little bowl of some all-purpose flour with a little bit of salt and pepper, just a little sprinkle. And I am breading some of these things in this salt and pepper. I hope y'all can see this. I know. I'm, I'm having to bend down to see if y'all can even see it. <laughs> I might have to raise y'all up here in a minute. That's getting kind of aggravating. Let me see. See if we're ready. Let me try one out, guys. I believe we are. I'm going to raise y'all up a little bit so y'all can see my grease. I got some hot grease here. And I believe that's just vegetable oil. You can use corn oil, canola oil, or peanut oil, whatever you want to use, okay? And I've got it on medium high. Medium high, if that tells you anything, anything at all. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, see them start to sizzling. Frying up. I am going, y'all see my big bowl of deer steaks. I'm going to be frying for a while. I'll do this first batch with y'all though. How about that? Let y'all see how long they go. Get a couple of more breaded. You don't want to crowd them in there so they can fry crispy. When you first put them in there, they almost sound what I call angry. They're frying up really hard. And you'll hear them in a minute. That frying sound will go a lot lower, which means they're not so angry. And they're ready to take up out of the frying pan. There we go. We will see how long that is. I really couldn't tell y'all. Uh, maybe just a couple of minutes or a few minutes. Hey, Addie Lou. <laughs> I just want to come get in on it. Addie, I'm going to try to raise everybody up. I'm not sure if this is going to help or hinder. I just don't know. I'm trying to get y'all over here where you can see everything. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, guys. Um, I was going to show y'all what we've got going on. Fried cabbage. I just chopped my cabbage up and I washed it in my colander. And then I put some bacon grease in the bottom of the pan with a, just a tiny bit of water. And I fried it, like stir fried it. And now I'm just letting it sit and kind of stay warm and sort of steam it a bit. And of course I put some salt and pepper. And then we've got corn. I just used some frozen corn. The grandbabies love that. And here is our peas that we've got going. These purple whole peas. I did go down to the candy kitchen and get a bigger 
pot form, I know. And then here's our mashed potatoes. I'm hard to pick it up. <laughs> our cream potatoes, I always call them mashed potatoes, but they're sitting here nice and warm in that glass. That glass mix them all. I'm so excited to have. Yep. Yeah. Did y'all hear these? They settled down a little bit. They're getting close. I'm going to flip them. Let's see here. Let me get something else to flip them with. See if I can come down on the beer stage. How about that? Oh, wow. Those look disgusting. You hear stuff right now? These are looking good, aren't they, Addie? Right. Right. The they are, but they're not cooked, baby. These are the cooking ones. Aren't they looking good? But they're a blonde color. We want them to get toasty brown, don't we? Toasty. Toasty brown. So we're going to keep them a-going. There's a Y'all, this is a pan that I like to use. Um, see if I can get y'all back the other way. Zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. There we go. I like to use this pan. It's got this little rack in it in case a little bit of grease likes to drip off the bottom. That way they all stay nice and crispy. And I've got my oven on warm. Not the one I have the rolls in, but the other one. And um, it's going to uh, keep them nice and warm till all the family gets here. All the parents of these grandkiddos, huh? <laughs> well, can I get a Reese's Pieces? You can, baby. Get your Reese's Pieces and then that'll be enough till we eat supper. All right, darling? We've had cereal. We've had pizza. We've had Funyuns. <laughs> now we're having Reese's Pieces. Last night we had hot chocolate and pop popcorn and watched just a movie. We watched The War with Grandpa. If y'all haven't seen it, it's very cute with Robert De Niro. <laughs> it was fun for all of us. Big kids and little kids. I'll come back and I'll let you... Okay, y'all. They have been going exactly three more minutes, okay? And they really got calmed down here. And they're frying. So maybe five, six minutes all together. I was just going to show y'all one frying because y'all see I got to get with it. <laughs> I won't do my fast forward again. We'll just, y'all just take me at my word, huh? I did that on the sausage bites and I watched it and I laughed and laughed. It was funny looking. <laughs> funny looking. There we go. And that's what we're going to get. I'll come back when I get through with the whole entire pan. How about that, guys? See y'all in a little bit. Hey, guys. It's been about an hour, and my macaroni and cheese is on low. I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to give it a stir. Let's see here. Oh, it's looking nice and creamy and good. Something I think I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on high because my kiddos are going to start getting here about an hour from now. So I want to go on and get this going. And I may come back and turn it on low, okay? That's why I want to um, let y'all know how I do. <laughs> Sometimes I go back and forth. I'm going to pour just a little bit more milk. I mean, that probably wasn't an eighth of a cup. Just enough to make sure it's going to have plenty of liquid for those... Uh, that pasta to go on and cook away. Okay, y'all. I'll just let y'all see my step by step. Yeah, okay, y'all. We have finished the deer steak. Yes, we have. You can talk a minute. It's not going to pick up over here. And while this grease, this uh, grease that we fried our deer steaks in while it's good and hot, and it's got my ladle hot over here, I'm going to scoop up some of it like that put it over in my cast iron skillet and I love to scrape and get some of that sediment that went to the bottom off the breading of the deer steak y'all see that I love that in there too that gives it a nice little flavor okay put that there I have my whisk what I do with it y'all see what I do with that whisk there it is there it is alright I'm going to get some flour just some all purpose flour and you try to do equal amounts of flour to your 
oil. And if you're starting for the first time, do about a quarter cup to a half a cup of oil and a quarter cup of a half a cup of flour. Same amount. I kind of just eyeball it. If it's still a little too liquidy, I'll put a little more flour. I think it's going to need just a little bit more flour. Y'all see that grease that we used, that vegetable oil? It's already good and brown from frying the deer steak in it, so it already kind of does some of the work for you, doesn't it? Just another small little sprinkler. Yes, I'm going to show y'all the, the venison steaks. Let me get them out. Let's stir this in another minute, y'all. A few seconds. Let's turn that down a little bit. Let's cook it up quickly on this burner. I'll put y'all over here. And I'll show y'all that big pile of venison steaks that I turned off and we worked on. Let's see, where are they? Here they are. Here they are. Looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> and if some's left over, y'all know I'll cook them in a the crock pot for John and me later in the week. Show y'all these rolls that just came out. Here's these yeast rolls we were doing earlier. Y'all see those? They look good, don't they? Oh, they look good. They're hot. They're getting hot. Alright, back down to our gravy. My camera just told me something, y'all. I don't know if it said the battery's low. I'm trying to find the battery on here. Yep, that's it. I'm going to switch batteries out so I won't lose y'all. Okay, y'all. See how it's browned a little more? I've been stirring it with the whisk occasionally. Just babysitting on it. And I believe so we can get this show on the road, I'm going to call it time. And I love to use this in my gravy. If I don't have roast beef stock that I'm making roast with, then I'll use this, some, a can of beef stock, and this one is um, half the sodium. But you can use whichever kind of beef broth or stock you want to use. And I'm going to pour that in there. Be careful of the steam. Y'all see that steam coming up. And whisk this in as I'm going. This just makes your gravy that much more flavorful rather than water. I did that years ago, and now I can't go back. <laughs> Y'all see how nicely it's thickened up already. I might have to add some more stock to it. I believe I am. I believe I am. Got me a second can here, guys, which I'm feeding my whole family, so that's fine. That's just fine. I think I put more than a quarter cup of the oil and flour. That's the reason why I'm needing some more. I'm going to whisk till I get it the right consistency here. With my beef broth, I keep saying stock, but this is just some broth. I think I'll go and put that whole can. I'll be perfect. Just perfect. Now I'll crank it back on. Turn it back up. And I'll let this come to a good boil. And then turn it down on low. And it will be ready to put on our mashed potatoes. Yes, it will. And I like to put just a little bit of fresh ground pepper in here at this point. Totally optional. Okay, y'all. See how it's browned a little more? I've been stirring it with the whisk occasionally. Just babysitting on it. And I believe, so we can get this show on the road, I'm going to call it time. And I love to use this in my gravy. If I don't have roast beef stock that I'm making roast with, then I'll use this. Some, a can of beef stock, and this one is um, half the sodium. But you can use whichever kind of beef broth or stock you want to use. And I'm going to pour that in there. Be careful of the steam. Y'all see that steam coming up. And whisk this in as I'm going. This just makes your gravy that much more flavorful rather than water. I did that years ago and now I can't go back. <laughs> Y'all see how nicely it's thickened up already. I might have to add some more stock to it. I believe I am. I believe I am. Got me a 
the second can here, guys, which I'm feeding the whole family, so that's fine. That's just fine. I think I put more than a quarter cup of the oil and flour. That's the reason why I'm needing some more. I'm going to whisk till I get it the right consistency here. With my beef broth, I keep saying stop, but this is just some broth. I think I'll go and put that whole can. I'll be perfect. Just perfect. Now I'll crank it back on. Turn it back up. And I'll let this come to a good boil and then turn it down on low and it will be ready to put on our mashed potatoes. Yes, it will. And I like to put just a little bit of fresh ground pepper in here at this point. Totally ah, <laughs> oh, y'all look who just showed up. Ashley in her little outfit. I want y'all to see her big coat wrap keeping her warm. And her mama showed up too. <laughs> Somebody had to bring me. Yes, they did. She can't drive yet, can she? No. <laughs> okay, guys. Show y'all what this mac and cheese looks like. Y'all know about 20 minutes ago I put some of that rest of that cheddar on there I want y'all to see Ooh. Yeah. so good all together I'm trying to think it went it went one hour on low and one hour on high <laughs> so, I don't know about three hours on low maybe or I'd probably do an high for an hour and a half maybe two hours so you just kind of stir and then you'll know Okay, guys, they're all here. We're about to eat. Papa's going to say the blessing for us. lit up out here like it was daylight. <laughs> Girls, did that scare y'all? No! Here we go, here we go. Whee! Beautiful. <laughs> that one's falling down on me over here. Trying to get y'all far, far back so y'all can see all these pretty fireworks. Blake does this every year for us. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 